I'm Kevin Roy. You may recognize me from my YouTube series, Efficient and Proficient. If you haven't seen it, please take a look. I am a journey person and a fabricator for the last 18 years, three of those years as a foreman of my shop. I'm here today to show you how to build a bike rack. And the purpose of building this bike rack is to get you more involved with your local community and to give back. So I'll be using a variety of hand tools to get this job done, like my angle grinder with some zip cuts, tri-square, got some drill bits. Now I understand not everybody has the same tools that I do, but there is more than one way to do this job. And of course, as always, proper PP. So for making this bike rack, we'll be using inch and a half by inch and a half, 3 16 square tubing, half inch round bar, and quarter by two flat bar for our mounting pads. So you will have a print to work off of with cut lengths, but how did I get to that point? So what I've done is I drew in my inch and a half tubings at the span that I needed. I've used a 135 degree angle to keep it simple. And I've drawn in my half inch round bar at the height that I wanted. Then I pulled off my measurements and that's what we'll be cutting to. So the reason that I've done this is I will be turning this layout into my jig for bending the round bar. What I'll do now to set up my bending jig is weld these tabs to the inside of where my bends are gonna be. Then tack my rod to the table and I'm going to heat up where my bends are gonna end up and work that rod around. So it's important to let this cool before you go on to the next one. Reason being, if you don't let it cool, you could pull this out from where it's supposed to be. I've also left a little extra. I have a wrench here so that I can grab my round bar and give myself extra leverage. So I've just made two of these and I realized I could save myself a step and some prep by just adding one tab. Now we're going to move on to our mounting tabs. I want to show you a quick way of finding center on anything rectangular. All you have to do is go corner to corner. Trace a line. That's center. Hammer, come! There's a few ways of putting a hole inside of this plate. I could center punch it and drill it or I could pierce it with plasma or flame. And for that, I'm going to use this washer to mark my hole. So a rule of thumb that I go by, if my drill bit gets half inch or higher in size, I'm going to need to do a pilot hole. This spot here in between the fluted area, 
I need to make sure that my pilot hole is just slightly bigger than that. I'm going to go with 1 8. Now that we have all of our parts made up, we're going to take the two outside members of our frame and mark out where the half inch round bar is going to go. So you may have noticed that I use two ticks when I make my marks. This way that gives me a fine point where my mark is actually supposed to be. If I put a straight line, I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to be make that point fine, I know exactly where I'm supposed to be. I've only marked one of my two bases. I'm going to use my tri-square now to transfer those marks to the other side. That way I know exactly that they are the same. Now I've got my two outside members set up the two ends. What I'll do is tack the inside corners on all four pieces and cross square. The reason I tack the inside is it will give my frame a chance to move if I'm not square. Up till this point, I haven't put a square on this. One of my pieces could be longer than the other, and that wouldn't matter, because I'm going to cross square. Go corner to corner, and make sure those numbers are the same. I win. So since my frame is square, I'm going to finish tacking. I'll tack opposite that first tack, and that way it's going to lock in my frame. It's always good to double check after you've done those second set of taps. I'm going to finish tapping the frame. Now that we know our frame is square and we finished tacking, we'll add in these mounting tabs into the corners. This is also going to act as something to keep the frame square. Now that this thing is locked in, I'm going to flip it over and start opposite my tabs. That way it'll minimize any kind of pull that could happen. I thought I would stop here to just talk about this corner. Some people say you should do the outside downhand weld first. That weld is kind of superficial to me, so 
So I like to do two outers or my gusset if I have one. Now that the frame is welded, we'll tack in our uprights. So I noticed after I put my frame together that these just land on the outside of my frame. I want them to hit center. That's an easy fix. Since these have a 45 in them, it's going to be hard for me to run a square up to make sure these are actually running true. So I've grabbed a chunk of three by three angle I'm just going to hold it to it while I tack. You could also use a clamp. Now that I've got my middle one set up, I'm going to flip this angle and use it again to put the next one on. So I chose three inches as my spacing because a lot of the new e-bikes have wider tires. So you might think this is tight together, but one bike will come in from one end and one bike will come in from the other. And I've left enough space here so the handlebars can't touch. So no matter what material you use, you can expect the welding to create stress in it. Since all of the weld is on one side of this, it's going to want to banana. What I'll do is tack this end with a shim in, clamp that far end to create a back. Then I'll come in and weld all of these, hopefully mitigating that bolt. So just a little side note, the amount of pre-stress that you use comes with experience. For this here, this is my estimation of what I should need. Inch and a quarter over the six feet. That could change. In the end, as long as it's pretty straight, you're lagging it down to concrete, that will finish the rest. So I wasn't too worried about weld sequencing while I was doing this, reason being I have the pre -bow. And You may have noticed I spent extra time on the outside of these. That's because I didn't bother to cut a miter into the bottom of this. I just used the weld to fill it up. Now that the frame is fully welded out, we're going to leave it under that pre-stress until it's cool to the touch. Now, pre-stressing something like this can be dangerous. When removing it, you wouldn't want to come in here and cut these tacks first. So we're going to start on the clap side and cut them out soon. So now we can come in here and cut these tacks. The other thing we can do is lift up that far side of the frame and let these tacks break. So checking out the frame, it is up a little bit, so we may have pre-stressed it about a quarter inch too much. But considering the amount of backhoe that we had, I'm happy with this result. So congratulations, you have a bike rack. You could choose to paint this or get it powder coated. 
when it comes time to install, you're going to need a masonry bit, a hammer drill, and some wedge anchors. So a masonry bit has a special carbide at the front that doesn't dull out when you're drilling concrete. A wedge anchor has a little collar here at the bottom. You're going to hammer that into the concrete, the hole that you created, and as you tighten, that collar is going to wedge itself inside of the concrete. That'll create tension. Thank you very much for watching this video on how to build a bike rack. The prints for this will be available in the link down below. If you found this video informative, please like and follow for more.